Hey guys, okay, we're going to go over the independent practice, page 75, 76, 1 through 9 odd. Uh, I'm going to give you the answers first, even though they are in the back of the books, and we wait till now to see them, which is fair. Okay, for number one, the answer is 90 cookies. For number three, the answer is 840 gallons. Uh, number five, 60 students. Number seven, I wrote various because there's many answers for that one. And for number nine, it's a big sentence, but uh, and I'll show you what it means if you fast forward to the part, that part of the video. Um, the equivalent fractions were not set up correctly. Now, if you didn't do the homework, that's not going to make any sense. But, hey, what can I say? All right, let's get started with number one. If 45 cookies will serve 15 students, how many cookies are needed for 30 students? All right, I read the problem. What do we know? I know we're talking about 45 cookies. We're talking about 30 students. And we're also talking about 15 students. Okay. All right. What goes together? Because we're talking about ratios and it's all about relationships and connections. All right. So it says here, 45 cookies will serve 15 students. Yeah, we'll serve 15 students. So if you have 15 students, 45 cookies is enough to feed them. What is it we're trying to find out? Okay, how many cookies do we need for 30 students? Okay, students to students, there it is, student, there's a connection. Students to students, cookies to students. All right, so the question is, how many cookies do we need for this many students? Okay, equivalent fractions. I see that I can scale up by a factor of two. 15 times two gives me 30. Right? So that whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 45 times 2, that's 90 cookies. Do you have to simplify? No. It's not asking you to simplify. It's asking you actually to scale up. So you want more. Okay? Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the relationship here. But, because you should already have learned it. But here we go. Now, the answer isn't just 90 cookies. You have to make a complete sentence. And the question was, how many cookies are needed? You need 90 cookies. Now, if you really want to be impressive, you can add, you need 90 cookies to feed 30 students. But for right now, I'll accept that. That's fine. You need 90 cookies. You answered the question directly. All right. Number three. A Clydesdale drinks about 120 gallons of water every four days. At this rate, about how many gallons of water does a Clydesdale drink in 28 days? Okay. 120 gallons of water, four days, and 28 days. Those are the numbers in that problem. How are they connected? What's connected? All right. I'm reading the problem again. A Clydesdale drinks about 120 gallons of water every four days. 120 gallons. of water every four days. That's connected. That's the relationship they're giving us. All right, but what else? What else do we know? What is it we're actually trying to figure out? What is it we're trying to find out? Okay, at this rate, how much water does a Clydesdale drink in 28 days? Now you're asking, why do you put days at the bottom, 28 days at the bottom? Well. Fractions, right? They act like fractions, but they're also, it's a relationship. So 120 gallons of water for four days, right? So days is on the bottom, so I'll put days on the bottom over here, okay? And by the way, does the order matter in this case? No, you can do, four, just a real quick, just a real quick review. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You can do it like this too. You can put four days at the top and gallons of water at the bottom. But if you do that, Make sure you switch this to the top as well. Days goes with days. Water goes with water. Or whatever it is you're talking about. So I'll just leave that there. I'm not going to erase it. All right. We'll just, since we erased it, let's just go with this. All right. I notice I'm going to scale up from four days to 28 days. I'm scaling up. If I'm scaling up, 
I'm multiplying, right? How many groups of four do I need to get to 28? Four times what? Four times what whole number gives you 28? Okay. Now, I've done this little trick before. I'll do it again just in case you forgot. It really is division. Four times something. Twenty-eight at the bottom, right? And so basically, it's four times what gives you twenty-eight. Four times seven. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It's just time tables. Okay. And again, whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. If I multiply by a factor of seven here, I'll do the same thing there. One hundred twenty times seven is eight hundred forty. Now I did that in my head, not because I'm smarter than you, just but I have more um, experience with this. But if you don't believe me, verify it for yourself. Here, I'll set it up for you here on the side. Multiply it on your own and, and see if th that I'm right. But again, that's not the final answer. You have to write a complete sentence. I'm going to be fancy and write the full thing. The Clydesdale. Oh, Clydesdale, hope I spell this correctly. It's a horse. It's, there's a picture of a horse right next to it. The Clydesdale will drink 840 gallons you could add of water it's fine that's up to you all right we're just chugging along here nice number five and guys again if you have your own way of doing it and it works for you by all means keep doing it your way i'm showing you one way of doing it but there's always more than that <clears throat> all right the table shows which subjects School subjects are favored by a group of students. Predict the number of students out of 400 that would pick science as their favorite subject. Okay. We have 400 students. All right. That's not going to help us with any kind of... That's not enough for a ratio. But if you notice, there's also a table right there. Okay. So, let me read it again with the table right here in front of you. The table shows which school subjects are favored by a group of students. Predict the number of students out of 400 that would pick science as their favorite subject. All right. So we're making a prediction. So this 400 has to be for something in the future. 400 students later. This is now. This is happening now. So I know that three kids or students pick science. So I'm going to add that. And I'll, You know what? For this, I'm going to put future. Just so I don't forget. Three students for science now. Okay. Oof. We're still missing something. Because in this one, for three students for science, we're talking about now. That doesn't help us with the future. Because this is, I think, a total. This is a total. This isn't a total. Because I need a total somehow. Okay, this is a three out of three students out of something. Okay. Now, this is one of those situations where you have to think, and you can do it. Three students out of what? Pick science. Now, you're going to have to add. Okay? If you didn't get the answer, it's because you probably didn't add. And by the way, you have to include the three. Okay? Total includes everything and everyone. Okay? So three students like science, but three students out of how many students? 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13, 13 plus 7 is 20. Now, I could do the work here. It's 20 students now. So now goes with now. We need the future. How many students like science in the future? You know what? I'm going to do the addition here just so you can see I'm not lying to you. 6 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 4 is 13, 13 plus 7 is 20. Okay, 20 students now. All right, so we're talking about science, people, students that like science out of a total amount of students. So 3 out of 20, science, and then students. You know what? Yeah, you know what? Let's just go with students. Why make it harder than it is? All right. So this is the now. <laughs> All right. Now in the future, if we have 
400 students, and if they follow the same ratio, they, if they follow the same relationship as this, well, how many students are going to like science in the future? Right? How many? Well, same thing. I'm looking from 20 to 400. It looks like I can scale up, right? Which means I want more groups of 20 to get to 400. 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. Repeated addition is just multiplication. So 20 times what number gives you 400? Now, you probably could do this in your head. I have no doubt you could. But just for the sake of argument, I'm going to do this. Why did I set up like this? Look at the previous problem. You understand what I just did? I'm making groups of 20. I can't make the 20 from 4, but I can from 40. How many? I can make 2. 40 minus 40 is 0. Bring down the 0. How many groups of 20 can you make from 0? In other words, what number times 20 gives you 0? Zero? 0. Okay. 20. Okay, and just like before, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. 3 times 20. I can do that in my head. That's 60 science. But that's not enough. you got to make a complete sentence out of that. So 60 students will pick science. Look, guys, before I go any further, if you're still having problems with multiplication and division, there are other ways of getting to the answer besides what I just did. In this case, you could have, you could have kept adding 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 right until you get to 400 then you count up the 20s or you could have done like 20 times 10 and see what gets you that you know what that gets you and then compare what you have many ways of doing this i mean i could spend i could spend here another three hours going over multiple methods and i want to do that all i'm going to say is you must memorize your times tables you must learn how to divide and multiply if you haven't done so already go on youtube there are plenty of videos that show you how to do this but don't just watch it practice it Okay. Anyways, enough lecturing. Number seven. All right. Now seven, I really can't do anything for you. I'm, I'll read it for you, and we, we'll just go from there. Find a report in a newspaper or magazine or on the internet that uses results from a survey. Evaluate how the survey uses ratios to reach conclusions. Oof. All I'm going to say is, everyone sooner or later uses a survey of some kind. You know, a survey gives you information about what people like, what people do. Uh, seriously, I'm sure you've done it. You might have even seen one, you know, in the year 2019, a hundred people surveyed said that their favorite game was uh, Fortnite. And that was out of 500, you know. So, look online for surveys with ratios. I think in class we'll probably end up doing this, but if you're not in my class and you're just watching this somewhere else, just look online for surveys and just Google it, survey with ratios. All right, and see what comes up. I'm curious. All right, that leads us to number nine, and we're almost done here with this. And here's the thing, guys. If you've noticed, these lectures are getting shorter and shorter. I spent a lot of time in the beginning explaining why things work the way they do. Now, at this point, you should know why they work the way they do, and now you just got to do the math. Now, what's left now is to think about the word problems and what tools you need to use to solve that word problem. So, it's going to go faster, okay? Anyways, number nine, let's see what we have. Read the problem first, always. Elisa's mom teaches at a preschool. There's one teacher for every 12 students at the preschool. There are 276 students at the preschool. Elisa is setting up equivalent ratios to find the number of teachers at the preschool, find her mistake, and correct it. All right, so what we have in the picture, we have 12 to 1 equals something, 276. All right, let's see what the numbers mean and see where, where things went wrong. We have... One teacher for every 12 students. And that's the now. What's the other problem? 
Ah, okay. If there are, there's also 276 students. All right. Now, does teacher go with 12 students or teacher go with 276 students? If you're not sure, read the problem. Let's see. At least his mom teaches at preschool. There is one teacher for every 12 students. One teacher for every 12 students. One teacher for every 12 students. Okay. So far, so good. And I also have 276. And that goes with 12. Why? Because it's 276 students. Students go with students, right? So the question is, how many teachers do we have in this case, if we have 276 students? Okay, so we found the mistake. She set them up incorrectly. The 1 goes on top, and the 12 should have gone with the students, just like it does here. And guys, this is why I tell you, label them. Label the numbers. What do the numbers mean? Otherwise, you'll, you'll do what Elisa did and make a mistake in setting up your fractions, and you'll get the wrong answer. Okay, but all right, let's see. I see that we're scaling up again. 12 times something gives you 276. Ugh. Now this, honestly, I can try and do it in my head, but who am I trying to impress, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead, paper and pencil, no shame. And again, this part, basically you are doing a division problem. How many groups of 12? Do you need to get 276? All right, one step at a time, one step at a time. I'm making groups of 12. Can I make groups of 12 out of two? No. 27? Yes. How many? Two. Two times 12? You know, I'm gonna do pence, you can see it, even though I really shouldn't, but hey. Two times 12 is 24, right? Two times 12, 24. Mm, 27 minus four, 24 is three. Did I say that right? 27 minus, yeah. 27 minus 24 is 3. You bring down the 6. How many groups of 12 do you need to get to 36? It's a times table situation. 12 times blah, blah, blah gives 36. I believe it's 3. Yes, sir. Or ma'am. Okay. All right. 1 times 23. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. I was going to do a box. We don't need the box, right? So 23 teachers. Like I said, you need a complete sentence. So, there are 23 teachers at the preschool. And that's it. That is the independent practice.